Hello. Okay, so here we go again. Um, today, um, yeah, I've been cheating. Uh, I, I, so I, I wanted to uh, stream 100% of the work on the game, and I, I finally couldn't contain myself because I was kind of um, trying to find out. I was seeing something weird on on the test animation I had so far and I couldn't find out what it was so I've been doing some research and trying some ideas and it turns out that yeah okay so what I was thinking so initially the plan was to use uh, a timer right and at the end I don't think it's go I'm going to do that because it's so complicated and there is no point because I can't just sync with the VGA. So, um, actually, I think I'm going to remove that code, to be honest. Let's do that. Because I'm not going to use it. And so let's do this first and then delete this one and delete this one. And then do I have any dependency on that now? No, I don't. Okay, so yeah, so I have the time I'm gonna go to use the timer. We don't have time for this. <laughs> Too complicated. So I have done a lot of tests in background, uh, you know, out of the, the stream, and it's not worth it, to be honest. Um, it allows me to do things that I don't really care, and and it's complicated, and yeah, I mean, if I need to wait so, a specific amount of time, I can do it by, by waiting the VGA. And if at some point I, I need to have in the game an actual clock, and I need to count in seconds, then fine. I can do this again. Uh, okay, good point. Let's keep it for now. Because I still don't know what I'm going to do in the game, right? Hmm. Do I have changes in here? What is this? Oh, yeah, I want to keep that. Okay, so. But I'm not going to use the timer for that. For syncing, which is you know to keep a steady number of frames per second. So I have some code, and 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 actually that's what we have in main. I haven't changed anything in there. So so this code, what it does is well, I added a couple of things and I made a couple of changes. Again, I couldn't help myself, but it's not a big deal. So first of all, we erase the screen, uh, the buffer, the back buffer, and then I'm just just showing that on 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 the VGA directly instead of waiting for the loop. So that's one thing, and the other thing is because I want to make some changes in the blitter. Um, instead of passing uh, x, y, width, and height, I'm passing a structure in a similar way like SDL does. So I think it's a slightly cleaner, less parameters, and and we can use this. I think it's a good idea. So that change is not a big deal, and it will open the door to make all the changes that I plan to do today to have a different version of the blip function that is a little bit more flexible. Because this one um, requires the the sprite to have all the all the pic, all the bytes all the pixels um, as an array and you can't really get um, and a smaller area of the sprite so you need to get you know all the sprite because we, you provide the size of what you want to put in here so it's 24 by 24 uh, in this case so I want to make a, a different type of blip function that is a little bit more flexible uh, because I'm thinking that I might use that I might not I don't know but yeah I want to do that today so I made that change as well but this is not really doing anything special so 
when I was playing the, so I was running that code and I could see something weird. And I think I mentioned that last day, like in last session that it, we were looking at it and there was something weird, right? Like some jumps, so it was not completely smooth. And I mean, we obviously we compared with with the native SDL code I'm, I'm doing for in my Haskell project. And yeah, it was, it's a huge difference. I wouldn't expect that much of a difference. So, you know, I was looking, you know, is there is any problem with this code? And I couldn't find really anything. So what I did was because I was thinking, could it be that um, there is some sort of weird sync? Because if we, when we wait uh, vSync here, so the first thing we do is we wait if we are in the middle of, of updating the screen. So if we're in the middle of the frame, we wait for it to finish and then we wait until the next vSync, right? So I was thinking, what, you know, is my code that is not, okay, you can see here what direct is being used and it's pretty much the same anyway. So could it be that my code is slow? Oh, you know, there is, we are out of sync, right? So we get early, so maybe we wait more or less. I don't know, in my mind, I was trying to find a, an explanation and it turns out the problem it's not that, it's just that, so this code is fine with VSync and it should work fine in a regular uh, PC with a VGA, but we are emulating this. So, so the VGA in mode, mode 13, 320 by 200, 256 color updates every 670 hertz right and my screen you know my operating system right now it's a modern operating system so we are working at 60 hertz right so this is a problem you see as well with you know all sorts of emulators in the case for example of you know I'm, i have more experience with 8-bit machines um for example the Amstrad cpc or the spectrum uh, they are pal machines so they update the screen every 50 hertz, right? So yeah, the emulator has a difficult time because it needs to translate that 50 hertz into, into 60. And, you know, if, if they do that properly, those emulators work properly, it looks fine, but it's not, it's not trivial, right? So in this case, the problem that we, that I think we saw is those box trying to adapt that animation does 70 frames per second, 70 hertz into 60, and it was not working properly. So what I what I did is, well, can I make the VGA work in 60 hertz? And I started searching, and I and it's quite interesting because I found this this post here, and. And it's kind of funny that it's actually asking or trying to explain the same problem I'm describing, right? So, so it is possible to get the VGA card to output a full screen 320, uh, 200 at 60 hertz instead of 70. Huh, huh, huh. Well, I mean, I found this because I was actually searching for that, right? Can I get 320, 200 VGA at 60 hertz? And I ended in this in this blog post, right? So, well, in this forum, right? So, so this guy was asking, you know, oh, it looks like I could get this, which is one of the X modes. Uh, but how, why do I want 60? And then he says, because it's more compatible with emulators and monitors, and it makes less work slow PCs because my game logic updates uh, are in sync with vertical blank. Yeah, okay, that's, it makes sense. So what I have seen, for example, that Allegro does, and I didn't want to do is 
you can reprogram the uh, the, the pit channel zero to generate an interrupt. So basically, you reprogram the clock, um, and you can sync that with the VGA. So you don't need to wait for the uh, for the for the blank for the with for the vSync, right? Because there is no interruption for the VGA. You need to actively wait for it. Um, and and in that way you can use for example you can update every 70 frames per second or you can do half of it if you want right so there are different options and instead of syncing with the vsync you can have your own way of limiting those frames per second great but i didn't want to do that because it's complicated and there are too many moving parts and i thought well this guy is but it looks like he's doing the same right um and it's also yeah and then you know we, this is it has a there is a plot twist at the end so you know people comment and then it comes juke judge or whatever you pronounce his name and and it's, this is quite recently right it's in in january this year so yeah, it's mentioning a uh, Jazz Ra Jack Rabbit that I don't know exactly what it is. I don't know if it was a commercial game or something. It could be, or maybe it's you know a new game for those. Uh, it sounds like it was a game back in the day, right? Yeah, 1994. Yeah, there you go. So this one is apparently doing what this guy is asking so and it shows i mean i don't want to get into the technical details of this i don't even want to learn about them right i mean enough to actually get this working because i have done this with the amstrad cpc to get the split screen and all that stuff and it's complicated and i don't want to do that again and besides i don't have time i mean yeah we don't have time let's let's see what we how far we can get with this so yeah, it does a, a very nice explanation and then it, it makes a proposal saying, well, you know, pixel clock is the same, then, uh, you know, everything is the same in the horizontal than the vertical. You can increase the number of active lines, then, you know, it makes the numbers and at the end it gets to 5977 hertz, which is sick pretty close right uh, which is cool uh, yeah so this guy said yeah that's great you know that game is doing it 320 200 uh, at that um, you know at um, 60 hertz but it's not exactly 60 um, and then this guy came with this and he's actually doing it um, with two options, you can have a square pixels or you can have the because the pixels in the VGA mode are not the square. So he did this, and and that's what I'm going to use. Is the code is public domain, and yeah. And what is the plot twist? The plot twist is that then I realized that this guy um, is saying that he is. Sorry, why did I do? He is in Spain, right? So he's, he's potentially Spanish. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe he's not Spanish. And then there is this um, this project uh, that is little game engine for BGA EGA that it has Spanish name, you know, Spanish text on it. And it's the same user. So it turns out one of the examples I was comparing with is actually the code of this guy. And yes, if we look at the code uh, somewhere, what was that? Was it in main? When he does say in it, somewhere, yeah. I can find it now. Um, so long story short, it is just using the same code snippet with the same comments and everything. 
So that's great. So I don't know what it is. I think it was in DFX. So I was very confused because you can check the code, this code, you can run it and it runs perfect. And then I couldn't see the same when I was running my code. And after reading this a lot, so, ah, but it's doing more things because it's using more, using modex and playing. So it's using the code from this guy here, you know, gives credit and everything, but it's, it's doing the same. Oh man, what is the, what is the in it? No. So LP. Uh, okay, so maybe it's in Cis. To be honest, I have a check out of this. It's probably easier to navigate that using GitHub. So set up in it. There you go. Here. So this is the same code snippet with options to square pixels or whatnot. So yeah, so I found this. That explains and gives the code that this guy is using, uh, and I had the example already. So this works fine. So why my code did look so terribly bad, right? Despite me not doing anything funny. Well, and that's what I have done. I have used the same code snippet here. Uh, that I'm using when, oh man, uh, so I closed the wrong one. So it's basically when we are, when we set the mode 13, what I'm going to do is I'm going to configure this the way I, I want, which is, you know, following all the steps. It's the same code. I'm going with the square pixels. And then now this is running Well, <laughs> mo mostly smooth. I think uh, OBS may be not helping right now. So the capture, but yeah, it's a smooth. Still not perfect though. I'm not completely sure why. So before getting to this code, what I did is in here, I did some login. I mean, we can actually do it now because I was thinking, what if this is, you know, you know, out of sync? It doesn't make sense what I was thinking, but what I did is um, have a counter in here instead of, you know, just waiting and write into a file counting how many times these two loops happen. And so the first thing is that uh, the first one, it never runs. So it means that, that my code ends before, I think it ends before the vSync starts. So my code is fast enough. And then the other bit is that this one was consistently running and more or less at the same. So anyway, it means that this was doing what I want, which is the syn synchronization. So we fixed a uh, 60 frames now. Um, and before it was 70. So there was no reason for looking weird like that, other than, yeah, it apparently those box was, was not handling that brilliantly. So that could be it. So this is working with 60 Hertz. So, I'm going to comment this and, and again, I'm not going to spend the days because I just read enough to actually to actually understand what the guy is doing, but I don't plan to, to do more with it. So, so, so set. Well, it's not 60 hertz, but it's close enough, right? Okay, so, and also, 
what I was checking is because we can make a very we can make a very quick test here. So if, if we make the buffer just a quick test. So if we make the buffer the screen. So now every time we we are drawing, we're drawing on the screen, not on the buffer, right? And the update is not necessary anymore. And then in main, well, you know, we can remove it. We're going to drop the changes later, right? So now the difference is that well, it really doesn't matter. So the first one we get a little bit out of sync, but then it will got it, get in sync again, in sync again. So if we run this, see the first frame was a little bit funny, but after that, so this is without buff buffer. So yeah, I think this suggests that the measurement I was doing is right. So the code is fast enough. So we don't need more time. Obviously, if we start doing more, so, so we, I mean, it's going to be in the same position, right? But so now it's going to take longer because we draw in 10 times. So the first one, we know it's out of sync, but then after that, see, so without bad buffer, we could be handling Ten sprites of that size. Actually, it looks even better than with the back buffer. <laughs> but I think it's working like this because of the sixty hertz. Uh, if we were we were doing seventy, I think that's what I was seeing on the on the screen, really. And you know, right now, even with OBS, at least. I mean, I'm looking at it, not going through the capture, and it looks perfect. I don't see any problem whatsoever. So, actually, I'm wondering. I'm wondering something. Sorry, not that one. I'm wondering. So let's reset the the VGA to to back buffer again. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same or not? Yeah, I think it is. I'm not completely sure. I mean, so let's do 10 more. So that's 20 sprites. I think it's fine. It doesn't look like there is any problem, right? So, so that means that, so I think, so at this point, I'm happy with that. We sync with the VGA uh, and that's it, you know, that's enough. So we're going to go to 60 frames. Uh, can we do things um, differently? Um, so, I mean, I kind of, oh, there you go. So I kind of prefer having an interrupt and not having active waiting like, like we do here, right? So I'm not sure. But then, yeah, I don't want to do the timer. Not really. So can we do things differently here? I think we can. We're gonna still wait for VSync uh, 
to measure time so it's going to be 60 frame every time so if we update and draw every time we sync with VGA with the VGA but that doesn't mean we need to do 60 frames we could be doing 30 if we wanted uh, because basically we could be having a steps so um, for example let's pretend that we, we're going to do it okay so so we can do if if that do we have that variable somewhere no i'm not going to be making this so if that is zero we draw everything right otherwise we bleed in any case we change that variable and I guess we want to have the vsync at the beginning so there is no cheating when we do the update right so with this that this is updating at 30 hertz sorry yeah 30 frames per second so we do half of the work every frame right i mean we could be even splitting things further like so we do erase update draw i mean at some point the update starts to get complicated we could be doing erase draw uh in here or i don't know i mean this is the when we copy the 64k so and obviously uh we can move double the speed or whatever I mean, it's obviously, it's, it's 50 frames now. Sorry, 30 frames, not 60. So it's never going to look the same, but you know, we have options. There are options, which is great. Um, cool. Um, so that's one of the things I wanted to, one, it was done already, but I wanted to explain. There is something funny going on with the, See that? But it's like, it's not as highlighting sometimes it goes silly. Anyway, um, so that was one part I wanted to do today. Um, another thing I would like to do is detect the VGA. What are the chances that you don't have a VGA when it's protected modes, right? So. But perhaps it could be a nice thing to do. Um, but I'm not completely sure if it's out of scope for what we want to do here, but... Um, so... Let's see. So the BGA, we have the set mode. Maybe... Are we doing this? Uh, and then this is going to be... This and then everything is successful. We do the down one and then main. What we can do is... We can exit and that's it. Similar to what we did here, right? But we don't need to repair the, the mode, I think. File it to, um, to whatever. I don't think this is right. <laughs> so this is what we do. Open the frame buffer. I don't know. It's not really what we're doing, really, but file it to in it
players doing the VGA card strike. And then in here we can do the, the detection. How do we detect the VGA? Haha! Hoo-hoo! So I have no idea to be honest. Um maybe there is documentation here. Oh yeah, I was looking at the timer. We're going to close this tab. Forget about it. So No, that's not oh that's the only place where we detect well there is a lot of register here. So what can we do? Hmm, hmm. Do you know what? Let's see what a friend is doing. Uh, so here, is it detecting? I think there was some code to detect VGA. So main, low sort of things, low funds, setup. It just is global variables everywhere. So, detected car. Oh, check graphics car. So, what is it actually doing? Oh, it's a um, it's a bias interrupt. Cool. Um. Okay. So. And it is doing what? So function 1a, which is not here. Oh, look, Ralph Brown interrupt list. That's a classic. Um, so we're talking about 1A, right? Huh? No, it's A. Uh, sorry, wait a minute. So, is 1A. Oh. Is this one? What is also saying? BL. Interesting. So get display combination PS VGA MCGA. This function is commonly used to shape the presence of a VGA. Aha! This function is supposed supported on the ATI EGA wonder, EGA wonder with certain undocumented configuration switch settings. Even though the EGA wonder does not support VGA graphics, so the screen in this case call. 1C00 with non zero, which EGA Wonder does not support. All right. Um, so, okay, let's look at one at that one. 1C. One C, Okay. Oh, this is cool. Say restore video state. Money be biases. Corrupt the video register when saving the state. So program could restore the state immediately after saving it. Uh, the bias of the area, the blah, 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 blah. The function is not supported with this is running. So maybe better installation check the usual. Uh, the function may be a better VGA installation check than the usual. Maybe, but maybe not. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we can try that. 
So we can try that. Let's see what happens. Why not? So we say it's going to be so sorry, let's go back to the to the other place. So we're looking at uh where? Where is that? One eight zero zero. Right, so it's saying with CX non zero. So this is going to be one C zero zero and then one. A number of sixty five byte blocks needed. Alright, okay. Wait a second. Function zero return <sighs> return state. So this is saying call with CX non zero. Yeah, but there is no input in here. Right? So why is that on return? Re request to ah oh, man. So forty eight. There is no sentiment anywhere. Oh, table forty eight is this one. Well, we can we can ask for one. Right? So we can ask for one, which is the video hardware. And then returns VX and number of 64 blocks needed. It's a buffer reserve video state. No idea how this works. Let's forget about that BGA that EGA. <laughs> we don't care. So let's do what we were doing here. One eight zero zero, and that's it. Which is kind of simple, right? So if Rex, what? Mm -hmm. And I don't know how this works. So, what is this guy doing? H. Okay, it's H A L. Let's try this. So, if this is one A H, so one A. So, that's it, right? That means that, yeah, we have a VGA card. So if it's not, and that's it. And then we probably need to do a mention now here. Yeah. Zero. Uh, why is oh, because I use wrong thing. Okay, so um, let's pretend we don't have a VGA car and we do that, those box. So let's say that we have. 
AGA. Did freeze. Oh, it failed to detect that. Oh no, sorry. My bad. Yeah, it didn't show the graphic mode. Yeah, failed to init the VGA card. Yeah, that's fine. Because we have a VGA, EGA now. So we're using SV Super VGA S3. Oh, that's kind of nice. So we can use other things here. We can use... So we only have a VGA, which is kind of weird because we have four megs of RAM, but... Cool. Excellent. So this works. So the dead VGA car. Yeah, do we need to say anything else? You know, if it doesn't work, that's the only case where this may not work. So we can even say in we could even say something here, error failed to need the VGA car. Well that's fine. Enough. Hey, hey, hey. I like it. But that's not really important. I mean, we are getting distracted right now. Anyway, today has been a long day and I'm tired, so I'm not sure I'm going to last too long today. So the other thing I wanted to do today very quickly, maybe we can finish that and call it a day, is uh, improve the blitter. So I would say thinking, have a blitter that you support, we support a uh, wrecked instead of what we're doing right now. So we can do this. So the destination is going to be destination and in, and in the source. Okay, so this may need some, um, is, How do I say this? In source. Because it has to be the hate and uh, the the, the width and height of the sprite. Uh, not the rectangle we're going because we're not going to support the scaling, right? So so let's copy this. And blah, 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 blah. let's make that. I mean, it's going to be based on this one, so it's going to be pretty much the same. Um, pretty much, pretty much, pretty much. So, the only difference is that instead of in increasing the sprite all the time like this, this is going to be. Uh, more like um, plus multiply by um, width. Um, ba -ba 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 -bam -bam -ba -bam. And so I changed this so we don't have to multiply anything inside the loop. So I guess we can do something similar here. We can do uh, 
Uh, is that true? So, can we do this? Ah, integrate 16, yeah, to, to see the clip, to do the clipping. We are not going to do the clipping on the source. It doesn't make sense. So, <clears throat> so what? So why I did, why I did this? Because, so you could be doing 200, so 199, 5, 320. That is less than 64k. So yeah. So this is this doesn't need to be. Oh, but it's that this is on, without sign, right? And we need to know if it's it has to have sign so we can clip if it's less than zero. Otherwise, it will wrap around. Uh, is that correct? So no, it's not correct. So because we could be doing this. And it's still less than, uh, okay. So this could be 16 and it could be like this. And it, now, yeah, I mean, if, if it wraps, right? If, if you go less than zero, this always has to be less than than this so if it wraps and we go the other the other way okay let's do something here let's try this so it doesn't change anything and now Let's make it get out of bounds on purpose, right? So So let's try this. <laughs> well, well, well. It doesn't look like it works. And also it it did crash. Dust box. Ah, I don't know. I'm starting to think that I can't use those box. So it's not, it's not working. Uh, why not? So, so we going over but how much a lot like 24 right yes it goes over okay there you go you can't do that once now it works it's going to do the clipping without crashing I like it, not crashing. Okay, so let's do this one now. Um, okay, so why is this and then... And then we can do this. Thinking, hold on, I can do this. We can do this here. Well, it really doesn't matter. I mean, I can put it in here. 
and then the compiler will optimize will optimize uh, accordingly. So, so sx, which is the source x, and source y we know it in advance, so it's going to be source y like this. Then we increase sx and we finish this and we need to add a new line i mean to be honest we could be doing it here as well can we define two variables inside i, I, I probably can uh the color syntax is not happy about it can i do this I don't know. Let's learn a little bit of C today. Uh, it's not too bothered about it, so you can define two variables of the same type. Alright. I'm happy with that. And so I guess we can do the same thing here. And again, it's the same type. All right. And now the benefit of doing this is that I can increment SX here. And here I can do SY plus source and B. And obviously this is not correct. We can fix it. It's a pointer. Is this not correct? Possibly. Okay, so it's not compiling. I'm not surprised. Uh, what is he saying? 105. Because I forgot the semicolon. Is happy about it. Okay. So now, um, so zero zero twenty four twenty four, and then we don't care about that. So bleed RC. source and destination yes but do we know if it's working really 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 so let's say that instead of doing that we're going to do 16 by 16 I think it's working. So the benefit of this is that we can have a sprite shift and then we can have the, the rectangles of the sprites. We can grab them from there instead of having, although the other one is more efficient, obviously. So if we can prepare the sprites like that, I think it can be useful. I mean, we have a way of embedding them in the binary anyway. So, and there is no restriction really. We can have as many small spaces as we want. It's just that perhaps to draw them in GIMP is going to be a little bit of a pain, especially if you have multiple frames, because you, have, you, you need to have them in one uh long column and you know i'm i'm kind of more used to to have it in horizontal but like i'm thinking for example the a font right maybe having more like a sprite sheet i don't know just thinking or maybe it's not worth it i can just keep it as a sprite sheet 
and then I can have a Python script super simple and and convert that into a single column. That would work as well. Actually, no, I did that already. So in here, in the project of the, yeah, uh, yeah, I did that. Just rotate here, especially for that. Oh, I have this already done. So it's because in the assets of the game, Ah, it's because of this. Okay. It's because I had... So this font, it was not like this. It was a regular font, like, you know, like an spreadsheet. spreadsheet. And with that tool, I just converted it like that. So... So when I process that, it comes like this. And actually, I, know, I mean, this is this is a, a fantasy console, so this is a frame buffer, and this is running a virtual machine with a 8-bit fake CPU I just invented. And this looks and feels super smooth compared with the DOS code. So that was also making me think, you know, could it be that is something funny going on here? But again, it could be, you know, the amount of work that those box is doing compared with the amount of work I'm doing in that virtual machine is, I mean, it's a big difference, right? Anyway, I think uh, this is fine. Uh, I'm not going to get the code of the main. Uh, and we can take a quick look of, yeah, I mean, this is fine. It doesn't look pretty, but it doesn't need to. Um, and on, the only thing we need to remember is that the rectangle we pass with the source, it gives the origin in the sprite, but then it has to give the total size of the sprite not the really the rectangle that we draw in. So that's the only thing that is like kind of so so. But I think it's fine. So, I mean, that's also useful, although I don't know, because if I, I'm still not completely sure what I'm going to do with the game, really. So what game I'm going to make? Um, so, because today is Thursday, and, you know, I've been kind of uh, streaming more often uh, about this project, because the time constraints, I want to best remember. So, because it has a counter, I like the counter. So we load that again. One month in eight days, the counter is going down. Um, so, yeah, even if I don't submit anything, I think that's a nice thing so I can finish something quick. Um, so yeah, uh, I still don't know what I'm going to make, but, you know, and I've been streaming more often, but I think it's very unlikely I will stream it again until next Tuesday, which is because I was planning to do streaming Tuesdays and Thursdays, so I don't get too tired about this. But considering that I wanted to stream everything and I have, you know, I, I haven't done it because I did a little bit off camera, but the idea is that, yeah, from now to next Tuesday, I should get a reasonable idea what I want to make and start drawing some sprites and graphics and stuff 
because I don't think I want to do that on streaming. I mean, I'm not good. It's very frustrating and it has to be boring. I mean, I'm not saying that this has been, this has been, this stuff has been super exciting because it hasn't been because the, I mean, a couple of sessions with the timer were a little bit like, like boring. I'm sure about that. But I think, uh, yeah, I would probably go into do some drawing, you know, off camera and, and have a little bit of an idea when I go into my other game, which is not going to be an amazing game, but let's see. Let's see what can we do. So I think uh, the blitter is probably done. Um, perhaps. Yeah, but we can do that anytime, right? Uh, okay, so because I decided to hide the the frame buffer completely you don't have access to it here right uh, because the open frame buffer returns success or error so and i decided to keep it hidden so it all depends i might open that because so bleeding sprites i mean i tend to do that often because so I'm usually making games for 8-bit systems and yeah, but it, I don't do many by pixel effects, but I could be doing that, this, that here because, you know, this is way more powerful. I mean, it's a 386 already, so, uh, but no, for, all, for now, yeah, I might change my mind and make the frame buffer available if I want to do, you know, like uh, the other game I was showing for the fantasy console. Uh, if I want to make a star field, for example, I need access to the frame buffer. So I made that available somehow. I don't know. I mean, instead of making the screen static, I could be making that available or whatever. I still don't know. But it's not a big deal. I can change that. But I think this the drawing bits is kind of done, right? Um, what else we might need? May, we may need to render, you know, a bitmap for bitmap. Maybe do we need a bitmap form? Probably. Uh, support for the USD, I'm not completely sure. It depends on the game. Uh, but I, I, I don't know if it's going to be worth it. To be honest, um, I think I didn't have. Oh, didn't have a USD in those. Yes, I have a gamepad. Uh, that it was going, it was connected on the Sound Blaster game port. So I had one. It was a little bit not good. It was a gamepad, not a joystick. So I'm not sure if this is completely worth it, but yeah, I have it here because I have a small kid, children, and you know, they would like to play it. And I don't think they can play with the keys for now. So, um, what else do we need? Uh, on the drawing cam, I don't know really. Mm. So maybe the bitmap font we can do. Um, then this, let's go into bump it down. Uh, and I think this is done. If I met, have to run map data, we will do that. I mean, it's not a big deal. I have plenty of Python scripts to compare uh, tile JSON into binary data for uh, the 8-bit game. So we can we, I can use. We can repurpose one of those very quickly. And some of those are open source. Or oh, most of them? Ah, yeah, a few of them are open source. So. It's, it's probably code already. Um, yeah, so yeah, I need to start drawing. The For the entity system, I'm thinking, I was thinking to use this. What was that? What is the name? Man, the new interface of GitHub is super slow. This one, yeah. I was thinking that we could be using this one. 
police. Maybe arrays. Um, dynamic array macros. Do we want to use a dynamic array? Hmm. Push, pop, and erase in the array elements. No, we can't use that. No, because I'm thinking. I mean, it depends. I mean, if we're going to have an entity system for the game. It's very likely that I'm going to need to add and remove entities for any point of the list. So I was thinking to use like this, a linked list. So you can add, delete elements, sorting them and editing over them, which is pretty much what I need to do. But the question is, how much control do I have on this? I have used this, but I don't know if I really want to use um, dynamic memory. So, and I think this one is going to, yeah, see? So I don't know. I mean, I, I might just get my, my, the usual entity system I use in the, in the 8-bit games that I wrote in C, we can use any of those. It's just that instead of converting to set it assembler to get faster, we can leave it in C because ECC will do a good job converting. So I can use one of those. So it's just a list. Uh, the only difference is that instead of allocating objects from the heap, we can have a limit like, I don't know, uh, 64 entities. And we keep two lists, one of free entities and one of used entities. And and that's it. I mean, it's just moving pointers around. We don't need to allocate memory. So that's probably the, the better way of doing it. It would be faster. So that's what I'm planning to do. Uh, and then, you know, when I have an idea what I'm going to do with the game, just to start adding the control to the player and all bits. And then... And that's it, really. And I mean, there's not much to do now for the game. Now for the sound, uh, I need to decide what I'm what I'm going to do with this, because if I'm using, I'm going to use the Sound Blaster library that we were looking at the other day. That the license is kind of. I mean, it's not a bad license, but it's not clear enough. It's just like some guy put together three lines thinking that it would have, it was probably a good idea in what 96 98 1996 I think it was or but it's not great now it really doesn't matter I don't think anybody's going to be bothered if I use that in this amazing game I'm going to make right um yeah but let's let's be legal if we can so so I don't like the license, but and again, there's another thing. I don't know how good it is. Um, I wouldn't like to add the sound too late and then realize that it's unstable or have crashes or, you know. So I should do some tests first and perhaps have some placeholder as soon as I know what I'm going to make with the game uh, and get it in, even if it's annoying to have. I mean, I just, I can try it and then we can switch the sound off. I just want to see that it's stable and it doesn't, you know, it's easy to use and all of the stuff, you know. It looks like it. And I think I have, I, rem I remember using that library actually back in the day in DOS with DJ GPP. Uh, so yeah, I need to try that. If I want to use that library, the sooner I get it in, the better. I mean, it can it can play mod files, so it can play a mod for channel. I can produce some okay music with that, and then just play some samples for sound effects. That would be enough, I think. Uh, yeah, but I need to see how how to do that, and if I can actually embed those in the binary, which I'm not sure. Cool. Yeah. 
So it's looking good. I mean, we're getting close to actually start making the game. Which is the exciting bit about this. Uh, I mean, we, I could have gone directly to use uh, um, Allegro, right? But it's probably, I mean, I'm learning more doing this than learning how to use Allegro, right? And it's probably simpler. I mean, the, num the lines of code I have written is very small. So, so um, anyway, so that's all for today. See you next time, probably next Tuesday. Bye.